Continuing with this training series, today we will learn how to taxi, take off, and climb on the F-40 Phantom, following the procedures of the real aircraft as described on its flight manual, adapted for the DCS simulator. The aircraft has already been cold started and is ready to taxi, the mission consists of, taxi to runway, before takeoff checks, take off, climb and follow the waypoints. The mission will end once you reach 20,000 feet. By default, the pilot's body is shown, you can use left shift plus P to hide it if you prefer. When a voiceover tells you to interact with a cockpit element, wait until the voiceover has finished, before performing the interaction. If you are repeating the mission, note that most voiceovers can be skipped just by pressing the spacebar. Press spacebar to begin. The aircraft is ready to taxi, just as we left it at the end of the cold start training mission. We will first contact air traffic control to request taxi clearance. On your HOTUS throttle, set the mic switch forward to transmit using UHF radio. The DCS communications menu should appear, select, F5, ATC, F1, BOTO, F3, request startup. Unfortunately, DCS isn't aware that our aircraft is already started, so we need to ask for startup permission first. After ATC answers, select, F1, request taxi to runway. Press spacebar once the controller gives you permission to taxi. Good, note that ATC assigned runway 07 to our flight. You need to be careful to taxi towards the correct runway end, as this airbase has two possible directions, 07 and 25. On the briefing we have an airbase diagram, with the taxi route drawn in orange. Press spacebar to continue. Before taxiing, let's review the controls you will use to steer and brake while on the ground. On the real aircraft, the nose gear steering, NGS, is actuated using a button on the control stick in either cockpit, its default key binding is N. The rudder pedals give the pilot's control over the tail rudder, providing your input for the aircraft trajectory. Rudder steering becomes effective at approximately 70 knots. Over this speed the nose gear steering should be disengaged and not be used any further. If your hardware allows, bind one of your HOTA's axes to the rudder pedals. Else, you can also employ keyboard bindings to control the rudder in a coarser way. To continue, push the pedals either right or left. Wheel brakes are used to reduce your speed when taxing, and to steer by applying differential braking left-right. If your hardware allows, bind two of your HOTA's axes as brake pedals. Else, you can also employ keyboard bindings as shown on the chart at left. To continue, apply either or both wheel brakes. You can open an overlay that displays the control inputs that DCS is receiving from your control devices, by pressing right control plus enter. Open it now. Operate your rudder and wheel brake controls, to confirm that they are indeed working correctly. Unfortunately, it does not show the status of your nose gear steering button. You can keep the overlay open as an aid while you taxi or close it with the same key combination. Press spacebar to continue. On the F4E, you can taxi with canopies full open or full closed. With the canopies open, maintain taxi speeds below 60 knots to prevent damage to the canopy operating mechanism. Add some throttle and immediately test the wheel brakes as you start to roll forward. Good, release the brakes and let the aircraft roll again. Press the NGS button and use the rudder pedals to wiggle the nose left and right, making sure it works. Now turn right over the yellow taxi line ahead of you, strive to follow the line. Reduce throttle, having it barely above idle is enough to taxi. At the next intersection, turn to the left. Again, strive to follow the yellow lines. Proceed to Taxiway Yankee, where you will turn right. Good, this is Taxiway Yankee. Proceed until Taxiway Hotel, where you will turn left. When steering left or right, check if the ADI and HSI react correctly, needle left, ball right, compass decreasing, or needle right, ball left, 
and compass increasing. Up ahead is Taxiway Hotel, turn left at the intersection. This is Taxiway Hotel, slow down and come to a full stop just prior to crossing the runway. Good, now look left and right to make sure that there is no traffic on the main runway. Then resume the taxi and quickly cross the runway. This is Taxiway Delta, at the next intersection turn left to enter Taxiway Whiskey. Be careful with other moving traffic. This is Taxiway Whiskey, proceed west along it. Maintain adequate distance with other aircraft that may be moving. On the oxygen panel, check. Emergency lever, normal. Diluter lever, normal. Supply lever, on. If ATC makes any hold position calls, ignore them as it's another ATC bug caused by having other traffic on the taxiways. We are near the runway's end, turn left at the last intersection to enter Taxiway Alpha. Stop the aircraft just prior to ingress the main runway. We are now on Taxiway Alpha, approaching runway 07. Stop the aircraft just short of the runway, the stop line is marked, runway ahead. We will now perform the before takeoff checklist. With practice you will be able to do these checks while still taxiing, to save time. Optical sight, check. Set either to standby or caged, as desired. Press spacebar to continue with the checklist. Internal wing transfer, normal. Confirm the switch is set to normal, so that fuel can be transferred from the wing tanks to the fuselage tanks.
Stability augmentation switches engage. Their engagement has been delayed as much as possible so that the bumps on the taxiway don't stress the AFCS system. Flight controls unrestricted. Wipe out the rudder pedals and the flight stick to confirm their unrestricted movement. Slats and flaps, check they are out and down. Press spacebar to continue. Anti-ice, as required. Today it's pretty cold, so set the anti-ice to R. Stabilator trim, check 1 to 3 units nose down. There are actually two different ways to take off, either with minus one nose down trim for an earlier rotation, but then at around 230 knots the jet will want to pitch up heavily and you would have to be prepared to counter it, or set to minus three for a tamer takeoff. Fuel quantity, check. Confirm there is enough fuel for today's mission. Canopies, close and check. While canopies were left open for taxi, with the takeoff imminent it's time to close them. Warning lights, test. Check the warning lamps one last time, with a right click and hold. Defog and cabin temperature, as required. On the real aircraft, the defog lever was set to foot heat, to prevent sudden fog inside the cockpit as you apply full power on takeoff. Command ejection selector, as briefed. On the rear cockpit, the seat command selector valve should be left open, horizontal, so that the weapon systems officer can initiate an emergency ejection for both crew. Ejection seats, arm. In reality, both crew members would lower a guard to arm the seats, but this is not simulated on DCS. This step completes the before takeoff checklist, press spacebar to continue. We will now contact ATC again to request takeoff clearance, on your HOTUS throttle set the mic switch forward to transmit. The DCS communications menu should appear. Select, F1, request takeoff. Infield Press spacebar one, once ATC takeoff. gives you clearance. Okay, now that you have clearance, look left and right to ensure there is no other traffic, release the brakes, and enter the runway. If ATC tells you unable to clear takeoff, ignore it as it is a long-standing DCS bug. Turn left and align with the center line of the runway. Once aligned, press the wheel brakes and stop the aircraft to a complete halt. You are not properly aligned with the center line. Release the brakes, increase throttle and retry the alignment, stopping the aircraft once done. Good, we will now proceed with the after lineup procedure. External transfer, as desired. Make sure the switch is either off or in the outboard position if you are carrying underwing tanks. If you carry a center tank, never ever set it to center while still on the ground, only after you are airborne. This is because the tank pressurizes immediately after liftoff and if there is a leak the nearby jet pipes can contribute to a tank fire. Press spacebar to continue. Anti-skid, on, light out. Be sure to release the brakes before you turn it on, to avoid brake hangups. Compass heading, check. On the HSI, check the compass matches the runway heading, 85 degrees. Pitot heat, on. IFF, as required. For this, circuit breakers, check all in. Warning lights, check. They should be all off. Press spacebar to continue. The actual takeoff is a very quick affair, so first we will describe every step in detail here and afterwards perform the steps on a much more succinct way. The slats out, flaps down position is recommended for all takeoffs. 
After the lineup on the runway and completing all necessary pre-takeoff checks, the engines can be run up to 85% RPM with brakes held and nose gear steering engaged to ensure nose gear alignment. With both engines operating in excess of 85% and the brakes locked, there is a possibility of rotating the tires on the wheel rims or skidding the tires, so don't go over 85% RPM. Check for normal RPM response and approximate readings of 450 degrees Celsius EGT, 4000 pph fuel flow, nozzles at 1 quarter, and 30 to 40 psi oil pressure. Press spacebar to continue. After releasing brakes, advance both throttles rapidly to full military power and again check RPM, exhaust temperatures, and nozzle position. If an afterburner takeoff is desired, shift the throttles into the afterburner detent and advance full forward for maximum thrust. Maintain directional control with nose gear steering or rudder as required. The rudder becomes effective for steering at approximately 70 knots. Wheel braking should not be used for directional control during takeoff roll. Nose gear steering should be disengaged when rudder steering becomes effective. Press spacebar to continue. Sufficient aft stick should be applied prior to nose will lift off speed to attain the desired pitch attitude. As the nose rises, pitch attitude must be controlled to maintain a 10 to 12 degrees nose high attitude for aircraft fly-off. Caution must be exercised to preclude over-rotation due to excessive aft stick rate or an extended takeoff roll due to late liftoff. The basic takeoff attitude should be held during acceleration and transition to a clean configuration. Trim change and control action during this period are normal. The auxiliary air doors, wheels, and master caution lights may illuminate momentarily as the landing gear and flaps are retracted. Press spacebar to continue. Okay, we are now ready to take off by ourselves. Wheel brakes, apply. Throttle, 85% RPM. Run up to 85% with wheel brakes held and nose gear steering engaged. Engine gauges, check. Exhaust gas temperature, 450 degrees Celsius. Fuel flow, 4,000 pounds per hour. Exhaust nozzles at one quarter. Oil pressure, 30 to 40 PSI. Wheel brakes, release, keep the aircraft aligned with the runway. Throttle, advance to military power. Throttle, advance to afterburner if desired. Nose gear steering, disengage. Stick, pull back, at 80 knots. Rotation attitude, maintain 10 to 12 degrees nose up. Trim, as required. This completes the takeoff checklist. Landing gear, up. Slats and flaps, set to norm. Pitch, adjust to 10 to 12 degrees, until 350 knots are reached. Throttle, back out of afterburner at 300 knots. Airspeed, adjust pitch to maintain 350 knots. Heading, according to flight plan. Keep climbing, but turn left until the arrow on the HSI is pointing at 12 o'clock, towards our next waypoint. Keep climbing until you reach 20,000 feet, try to maintain a climb speed of 350 knots and follow waypoints of the route.
You have reached 20,000 feet. Congratulations, you have completed the mission goal. Press spacebar to end the training.